Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to deep dive into what promises are and how to use them using JavaScript. This video is part of a little mini series that I am doing on asynchronous JavaScript, starting with Ajax, moving on to async versus synchronous JavaScript, having a look at callbacks, and now moving on to promises. So, what are promises? As we know, there are two types of asynchronous code styles you will come across in JavaScript. Those are the old style callbacks and the newer style promises. You will see promises used in modern web APIs. A great example of this is the fetch API. It is basically the modern equivalent of the XML HTTP request you would have seen if you watched my previous video. Let's have a look at it in code. So here we have the fetch API in action. All I'm doing it is using it in order to get all the countries from this REST API right here. It is called REST countries and I use it quite a lot in these types of tutorials. I can also write it like this. It's the same thing and more widely adopted. So I'm just switching these out for arrow functions like. In this code, fetch takes one parameter, which is a URL. If we look at this URL, so I'm just going to take it and copy it into my browser, it will show you some JSON, which I prettified using the JSON Prettifier Chrome extension tool, so we can read it a little bit better. This JSON is essentially a bunch of objects that are countries. They have the country name, country flag, and a bunch of other stuff to our disposal. Fetching this URL will return a promise. So if I simply comment this all out and write this, so literally just use the fetch and pass through the URL and console log out the response, you will see a promise is returned. The promise is an object representing the completion or failure of the async operation. It represents an intermediate state. It is essentially the browser's way of saying, hey, I promise I will get back to you as soon as possible. So essentially, if you ever see this, you know you are dealing with an async operation. This is why we need other code blocks chained onto the end of fetch. First, we have a then block. As you would probably have noticed by now, it contains a callback function that will run if the previous operation is successful. It will then receive the result of the previous operation. In this case, we want the responses JSON. And once that is complete, we move on to the next block of code. This also actually contains a callback function. I am getting the return of the previous successful operation and I'm assigning it to the variable countries and console logging it so we can see it in our console. Okay, so a lot of callbacks going on in there. If you watched the previous video on callbacks, this will all be making a lot more sense. Each then block is essentially returning another promise. So essentially multiple asynchronous operations are being made that are being made to run in order one after the other. So in other words, all the async operations or promises are being put into an event queue. This event queue will run after the main thread has finished processing so that they do not block the other JavaScript code from running. And finally, we have the catch block. This block is put at the end and runs if any of the then blocks fail. It works in a similar way to the synchronous try catch blocks, but that is something that we will leave for now and learn about more of this in the async await video. Now time for a little pop quiz. What if I display the first flag on the first country in our browser? So I add this code. I am creating an image and then appending it to the body of my document. Next, I'm going to just go into the JSON that's return and get the first object and get its flag and assign this to the image that we just made source. I'm also going to add console log flag added so we can see what is going on under the hood. 
Let's do the same for console log done. So after everything has run and up here, console log, let's go. Now, if I run this code, what order would you expect the console logs to appear in the console? Have a think about it. You would see, let's go, done, flag added. The browser will begin executing the code sequentially. The first block of code is the console log with let's go. So that will be executed. Next, we will move on to the fetch block. So this one right here. This, however, will be executed asynchronously without blocking anything else. So we carry on. We then execute the done console log as that is next. Note how all the other code right here is chained to the fetch. So it's part of the same code block as the fetch. So once the fetch block has finished running and delivered the result, we will then see the flag and of course also console log flag added. So hopefully this will now make sense if I wanted to actually get the flag source down here. So when we console log done and you should hopefully now understand why if we run this, we would not get the flag source. We will get an error because everything else is still being run. We are still fetching all that data. If this confuses you, let's have a look at something similar, but smaller. So I'm just going to get rid of this and paste. So just like we pass a callback function into fetch, we are passing a callback function into the add event listener JavaScript method. If we ran this code, the first console log will get executed. As no one has yet clicked the button, or in other words, the add event listener has not listened to a click happening on the element of button, this is blocked from running until that happens. So it works just like our previous example, except that in the previous case, the console log is blocked on the promise chain fetching the URL rather than the click. Got it? Good. Before we move on to the next section, let's actually recap what we have learned by having a look at promises versus callbacks. Promises are kind of similar to callbacks in that they are a returned object which you attach callback functions rather than having to pass callbacks into a function. However, they have a bunch of extra pros. Promises are specifically made for handling async operations. You can also chain multiple async operations together using the then operators. Doing something like this with callbacks is much harder and messier. Promise callbacks are always called in the strict order they are placed in an event queue. Error handling is also much better thanks to the catch block. Promises also avoid inversion of control unlike callbacks which lose full control of how functions will be executed when passing a callback to a third party library. Okay, great. With the promises covered, I think it's time to move on. Please feel free to go over this section again as promises are known to be confusing and take a lot of practice to get used to. Remember, practice always makes perfect and that could not be more true with this lesson.